Hi, I'm Corey Ellison, dramaturg, here to talk to you about New Orleans Opera's upcoming production of Hansel and Gretel. I'm willing to bet that Hansel and Gretel is the only opera in the repertory that's about siblings, created by siblings, and based on a story written by siblings. In 1890, Adelheid Wette persuaded her brother Engelbert Humperdinck, and that's the original Engelbert Humperdinck, to set to music four folk poems from Hansel and Gretel, the old German fairy tale immortalized in 1812 by the brothers Jakob and Wilhelm Grimm, a pair of university professors who are, ironically, better remembered for lulling youngsters to sleep in the nursery than in the lecture hall. When Humperdinck's little songs were first sung by Vetta's children, the family urged him to expand them into a Zingspiel, a music theater piece alternating popular flavored music with spoken dialogue. The resulting Zingspiel, performed for a small private audience at Vetta's home, in turn inspired Humperdinck and his sister to develop it into a full-fledged opera that was premiered in Weimar, Germany, the night before Christmas Eve, 1893. The conductor was no less than the great composer Richard Strauss. Because it's based on a beloved fairy tale, we, we tend to think of Hansel and Gretel as a children's opera. And of course, children eat it up. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Hansel and Gretel is also a mini Wagner opera. Seriously, if you saw and loved New Orleans Opera's production of Act I of Die Walküre a year ago, I'm pretty sure you'll love Hansel and Gretel. The long shadow of Wagner, to whom Humperdinck was a protege and an assistant, shows in a few ways. First, in its use of leitmotif, a recurring theme representing a person, place, object, idea, feeling, or action. Advertising jingles are what the German philosopher Theodor Adorno called them. Leitmotif and also provide the very musical fabric from which an entire operatic score may be woven. Some of the vocal writing in Hansel and Gretel is also distinctly Wagnerian. One writer once described the witch as an unhinged, cackling Brunhilde riding a broomstick instead of a winged horse. Wagner's influence is perhaps most obvious in Hansel's solo orchestral passages. The Act I Witch's Ride, for example, is clearly indebted to the Ride of the Valkyries from Die Valkyra. And the extended symphonic proportions of the evening prayer ballet pantomime spark recollections of Parsifal. But nowhere in Hansel and Gretel is Wagner's thumbprint more evident than in the gorgeous overture, whose hymn-like main theme, later heard as the evening prayer, echoes that of the overture to Tannhäuser with its Pilgrim's Chorus melody. So yes, Hansel and Gretel is Wagnerian, but that's an easy fact to miss. Its complex Wagnerian colors, orchestral and harmonic textures, and techniques go down so astoundingly easy through being applied to the most disarmingly simple of melodic and rhythmic foundations. See, the leitmotiven that Humperdinck wove his opera from are German folk tunes. If Wagner was the model for Hansel's sophistication, then the source of its bracing simplicity is German folk song in all of its four square homespun glory. Hansel is permeated with the spirit of folk song and it's dotted with folk tunes, some of them simulated like Hansel and Gretel's act one dance song and some actually quoted, including Zusa Liebe Zusa, which opens act one, and Ein Männlein steht im Walde from act one, scene two. Also, if you're a fan of American musical theater, I think you might get a kick out of the English singing translation that New Orleans Opera is using, which I'm proud to say I wrote. The original librettist, Adelheid Wette, wrote the piece in a sentimental and quaintly humorous style designed to move and amuse a late 19th century German audience. 
My aim was to similarly move and amuse a contemporary American audience. So I took my inspiration from the vernacular of American musical theater. Finally, Hansel and Gretel owes its great popularity not only to its cozy tunes and masterful musical construction, but again, like Wagner's works, to its deep resonance as myth. For what else are fairy tales but myths? This timeless story, much like Wagner's Norse legends, encodes the fancies and fears, the truths and terrors of all humankind. And in the never-ending battle between good and evil, who doesn't love a happy ending? <laughs>